The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. For more information about the church, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. My name is Jeremy File. I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church, and we want you. We have service this weekend, Sunday morning, 10 a.m., pre-service prayer at 9 a.m. You want to come check that out. If you can't be with us in person, go stream us online at AccelerateChurch.cc. I'm coming to you today from our radio studio at the church, and I have my pastor here with me, Dr. Mark T. Barkley. How are you today? I'm good, Jeremy, fighting the good fight of faith, and I'm winning most of the time. And uh, I don't surrender, and I don't quit, and I don't take hostages. That's it. I like that. Don't <laughs> ever quit. Never quit. I never, that. never quit. That's one of your main messages you preach, and I appreciate it. And Amen. I want to tell all our listeners, don't quit. Jesus said those that endure to the end will be saved. Yeah, that's so right. It's simple. Don't quit, and then it's over for the devil. Hey, it's easier to go on and fight than it is to quit and be a prisoner of war. Mm, that's good. Someone said, I think about this all the time because people lose track of the devil. I don't know if they think he's make believe or he doesn't really bother them or something. I don't know. But someone said, you know, Doc, this whole to me, you know, Doc, this whole um, this whole tithing thing, you know, uh, I'm not sure, you know, I believe in tithing and I don't know if I'm going to tithe. And I said, well, you ought to, because it's one of the few promises in the Bible where God said he would rebuke the devourer for you. Mm. But then I said, you know, everybody pays their tithe. Every human being on the planet is a tither. Because either the God who rebukes the devourer receives it or the devourer receives it. And if you let the devil get your tithe, he adds a high percentage to it. So you're way above 10%. But it is an earthly impossibility for a human being not to... Uh, to tithe, or we we might say to think they're going to keep the tithe. And so that's what rebukes the devourer. Mm. And right? people, people say, I don't believe in that. No, I hear all <laughs> kinds of lame little flimsy. It's like plastic under a torch, you know. It gets deformed and <laughs> it's not the same shape anymore. And it's like, are you kidding me? Well, that tithing is Old Testament. I know that's not the course of our radio broadcast, right. but putting it in the context of what we're talking about, the devourer is for real, the devil's for real. Well, that tithing is Old Testament. No, it was in the Old Testament because God wants you to do things right. But Abraham tithed before Moses, and no law was ever given to Abraham, so tithing wasn't birthed under the law. In fact, in the Garden of Eden, God said, you can have the whole garden, enjoy it, keep it, dress it, name the animals. But this tree, if you touch this tree, you shall surely die. Mm. Jesus Christ said, Matthew 23, 23, tithe. Yeah, he did. Tithe. Hebrews 7, sons of Abraham. That's Christians, in case people don't know that. We're under the Abrahamic covenant through Jesus Christ. That's right. And it, and it teaches us there to tithe according to the rules of tithing. And Abraham tithed before the law of Moses showed up. Absolutely. So it's like, my question isn't whether or not you're tithing. That's your business. My question would be, why would you argue with it when the Bible is so crystal clear? Yeah. And it's there for our protection, not because God wants our money. It's for your benefit. It's for your benefit. And, by the way, how is God going to test a free moral agent, which is whatever human is? Right. You right. have your free will to, do, to choose to do whatever you're going to do. Right. There will be consequences to that choice, but how does a loving God test a free moral agent? Well said. The, the tithe, I say it this way, is always a heart check. Do you recognize yeah. every breath I've ever taken— God gave me lungs, and he gave me air. Right. That means I couldn't make a penny without him. You know, the way you said <laughs> that, I like it. It's like we breathe, we inhale, we exhale. These are just common basic things. You eat, you drink, right? Right. This is just common stuff. It's that simple to get back to the basics of Christianity and be set and live a good life. And when people, when they, when they enjoy their sin for a season they don't calculate the the penalty of it afterwards mm. and it isn't always god swiping them and swatting them the wages of sin is death sin against your spouse and see how that goes mm, come on sin against your job 
eventually you'll get caught, you'll get fired, sin bad enough, and then when you go to apply for the new job, the new employer wants to know why the old employer let you go if you're such a great employee. Exactly. And now you've marked your whole life by your sin instead of just living right. Wow. Come on. Right. So you're, you you know, you can say, well, you preachers, but I'll tell you, you're listening to the voice of a 100% dedicated to the world and Satan former sinner. I know all about sinning. I am so street smart when it comes to sinners that they cannot fool me whatsoever. Wow. So all these little excuses I hear, I don't do this, I don't believe in that, I don't believe I need to do this in order to do that. You're talking to the wrong preacher, man. <laughs> you, you, you know, go blow smoke in a guy's face that don't know what it is, but that's not me. Yeah, and the Lord totally delivered you, set you free. Absolutely. Now you've been preaching how many years, Pastor, all across the world? I've been preaching since the early 70s, mid-70s, excuse me. That's I've a been long around time. the world since. Uh, I started doing strong global work like 1981. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time to a guy born in 1978, I have to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, let's see, I was ordained when you were born. <laughs> Not because you were born. It wasn't like, it was, I, oh my God, we better ordain you. There's this guy named Jeremy who's coming on the planet. We need to have an apostle out there. Oh. Uh, no, but hey, I am thankful for you. Praise thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Because you've been warning people about this end time hour. And really, if you would today, let's talk about, something that impacted my life so greatly through another minister that's like a father figure in my life, Pastor Keith Johnson. He was preaching at a conference I was attending in Dallas-Fort Worth, and he started talking about the dark cloud and yes. the glory cloud. Yes. And uh, my ears perked up. I just, in 06, got really serious about serving God. This was like okay. three or four years later. Okay. And I was trying to figure out, Pastor, how is it? I've been a church man since I was born, a preacher's kid. And then when we moved to Amarillo, my dad ran and operated, still does, Kingdom Keys Network here, and uh, radio stations. And I was faithful to serve my pastor. I was sitting in church. I didn't miss a Sunday. I mean, I may have skipped, after I got married, I think we skipped one Sunday. And wouldn't you know it, our friend, Pastor John George, walked in the restaurant that same Sunday. We decided to skip church, saw us in our shorts and (laughs) T-shirts. I was trying to hide. That was the Lord. It was the only time I skipped. Here's my point. I was very faithful to church. Yet it became worldly. And it was, I'm not blaming that pastor. I'm, I'm, no, sure. I became worldly, and I'm trying to figure out how sure. did that happen? Yeah. How is it that I don't miss church, and I'm a leader? I mean, I'm coordinating services. I'm uh-huh. a sound man. I'm a youth director. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I set up, tear down, I clean. I've done all those, all those things, so I was dependable. Everyone there thought I was great, but I became worldly. It was like a slow process. And when I heard Pastor Keith Johnson talk about the dark cloud, I didn't know it was you that had this vision, but you uh-huh. had a vision. Now, I want you to tell our listeners about this, because when I heard this, I thought, that's exactly what happened to me. The dark cloud had an undertow pull in my life Correct. because I correct. had my garment spotted with the flesh. Yeah, correct. Uh, I'll tell the short version, and they can get on our website or call our ministry if they want the whole definition, but it has changed a lot of people's lives around the world. It's been all over television, radio in books, in magazines, not just ours. And it was a vision I had in 1987. And uh, to tell the brief of it, I got caught up into heaven, is how, is how I say it. I got caught up into heaven. Uh, Brother Hagen was t- teaching at the time, senior, Dr. Hagen, senior. And I, I, I saw this dark cloud to my left, so dark, so dirty, And it was coming up over the earth. It was going to cover the whole earth. It was moving very slowly, very slowly. And I asked the Lord, what on earth is that? And the Lord said, anything dirty, evil, and painful you can think of. Demonic demonstrations and human misbehavior like you haven't even met yet is in that dark cloud. I said, well, where's that going? He goes, it's going to cover the whole earth. Mm. And I came out of that like vision and, uh, Then I got caught back up, and when I did, on my right-hand side, there was this light piercing into the corner of my eye, and it made my head turn away like you would, you know, protect your eye. Uh My head would turn away, and the Lord said, I want you to look directly into this this brightness. So I thought, well, it won't be easy, but I will. So I did in this vision. You know, you don't call your own shot in a vision. You're just there. And, uh, And I said, wow, Lord, what is that? He says, that's the glory cloud. 
I said, well, I see it coming up over the earth. The opposite side of the globe is the dark cloud. And I said, that's the glory cloud? What's in that? He said, everything that my Bible has ever promised, everything that I've ever done among men, and things you don't know that I'm going to do yet to heal, to deliver, uh, to prepare my church for, for my coming. Wow. And I said, uh, and the Lord said, uh, I noticed in the dark cloud that people were being just sucked, like you said, that tow current. Some were actually waiting for the dark cloud. Yay, the day is here. They were excited. They are excited about it. The day's here. I've been wanting to live dirty and not feel bad about it. Finally, I found a preacher that's not wow. condemning me all the time and always throwing this stuff in my... They embraced it, but then they couldn't get out of it. They couldn't get out of it. It had such a hold on them. But the worst thing of the dark cloud I saw was people... It's like they're on their bellies and they're being sucked in and they're just clawing at the ground. Probably a little bit how they clawed on Noah's ark door mm. once God sealed it. And it just sucked them in, man. Wow. And they were yelling and screaming, couldn't get free. It was too late. They gave way to it. Couldn't. So the Lord said, run to the glory. Tell my people to run to the glory. Tell them to do it now, not to mess around because the dark cloud is more powerful than they are. Mm. And the glory cloud will be the only rescuing agent left on the planet. Man, I hope you're listening. That's what we're yeah. witnessing right now. We're, we're seeing it right before yes, our faces. Are. Yes, Some are. people listening say, well, I don't see it. Well, open your eyes. Hey, Isaiah saw it. He sure did. Isaiah saw something similar. I don't know why I saw it. Maybe a whole bunch of other people have seen it for all I know. But Isaiah said, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. Yeah. So the question is, who is the you mm. he's talking about there? Come on. It's like the Lord's coming for a glorious church, right? Yes. Okay, a church, the church, some churches. Who is the church in that? Because everyone wants to say, hey, I prayed, uh, I prayed a two-paragraph sinner's prayer. How about uh, I buy the next round of whiskey and booze, praise God. We're saved. We're going to heaven. Wow. So what church is he talking about? Yeah, not the that one church. without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Wow. And so is it not true that Brother Hagen told you, Isaiah, tell that part of the story if you don't mind. We have about a minute left. Well, I went in the back after the meeting. I did. Brother Hagen never preached. He just prayed in the spirit. And when I, when I kind of came back, too it was like he was weeping we met in the back room i wasn't going to tell anybody this i hadn't sorted it out yet i mean this right. was a pretty dynamic vision yeah. uh, he he told me it was a trance wow i don't know about trances a lot a little bit but anyways he said uh he he come stood right by me and he said that vision you saw i said yes sir that was god and i'm thinking i didn't even told him i seen it yet wow i said how do you know sir he said i was in there with you Mm. And a day will come that it'll be it'll be a demand on you to tell the body of Christ about this, man. So that's wow. why we do. And you you were released uh, when I heard this from Pastor Keith Johnson to to further this story in just in less than half a minute here. He said at the time he wasn't supposed to say your name because you had just been released to start publicly talking about this. Yes, yes. folks, we're at the yes. end. Yes, and I hope are. that you're ready. And I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast today. We've got one more day left. And I sure appreciate my pastor, Dr. Mark Barclay, being here. If you want more information on his ministry, go to marktbarclay.com. And be sure to tune in tomorrow here on the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806 806- 418-8913. We also invite you to download the Accelerate Church app, which is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. Or if you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas, and our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.